Get the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. Again, somebody with depth perception. If you're looking at a toilet that's white with a white toilet seat, how do you know where to sit? How do you know where to lift? You don't. It's very difficult to see. So one of the things you will find that in many, many places, if you go into any assisted livings or memory care units, they usually have a blue or a other, often different color toilet seat cover. Easy, simple to do. You can buy them at Home Depot, Lowe's, wherever, but you are able to then see where that toilet is. It's a different color. We tell you to label, again, your hot and cold levers, your shampoos, your conditioners. And another thing we, simple to do, you can buy them anywhere a foam spout cover on your tub. Why? Because if you do slip and fall, at least you're not going to be injuring yourself more. A foam cover, I have one on mine for my grandkids, but it's a foam cover that I purchased a while ago for me in case I fell. And then anti-scald units. As we get older, a skin gets thinner and we're easily, more easily burned. You can buy anti-scald units for every part of every faucet in your home. And it, what it is, is it limits how hot it can get. Lighting. We all need more light, especially as we get older. But also somebody with dementia has a hard time seeing that glare that, that Arthur talked about. One of the things that we do for somebody who we don't want them to go out through a door is we put a black rug by that front door. Why? Because they think it's a hole. They don't understand that it's just a black rug. They think it's a deep hole, so they try to stay away. The glare you see on a floor, that could be very difficult for somebody because they do think it's wet and it makes it more difficult for them to walk around. So we try to use a lighting to help guide your way down your halls to your bathrooms, your night lights and things of that nature, and also to reduce glare. Um, general, smoking. I'm a proponent of not smoking, but I do, my father smokes a pipe, and I give him that because it's one of his favorite things to do. But if he had dementia and he wanted to smoke his pipe or a cigarette or a cigar, my uncle smokes cigars, is we would sit with him while he was doing it. Why? Because we do not want him or the home to catch on fire. But a little trick that we could do is remove his pipe and his tobacco and his lighter from his visite, and he may forget that he's a smoker and therefore he may not want to smoke, and therefore we reduce the potential for any injury or damage. Um, we talked about before placing tape on stairs. Another great place to put them is around heating vents, radiators, things like that. Red means stop, so people aren't going to go touch them. They know that's a place that they shouldn't go. Eliminate trippable hazards, such as the electrical cords, but hoses outside in the summer. I know I'm watering my hose, I get a phone call, I leave it there, I run inside to get my phone call, somebody can come be visiting me and trip and fall on that hose. So it's things to be conscious of as you walk around your home, as Arthur re mentioned. We tell you secure gates to your pools, to your garage, to your shed, to your grills. Make sure your grill is covered because you don't want somebody turning on that grill, leaving the gas and never igniting it. You could have a large explosion. Again, with trash, bans, trash bins as well. Why? Because somebody who has dementia may open that trash bin, see the food in there, say, oh, that looks like good food, and eat it. Not going to be good. So we tell you to put locks on your trash, trash bins and keep small pets out of walking areas. And as we're coming to the end of our little um, trip through the home, personal things. We really strongly recommend that you notify your neighbors let them know, give them a picture of your loved one and say, if you ever see my partner out and about, notify me or call the police because they're not supposed to be out unaccompanied. Keep an article of clothing of that person unwashed 
in a bag nearby. Anybody know why? Dogs. Right, tracking dogs. Tracking dogs will be able to pick up their, their scent and wherever they wander to much quicker that way. Personal emergency response systems, you can get one through the Alzheimer's Association. It's a wonderful product. They have GPS now and they can find you wherever you are. Then we also recommend for both you and the care, for the caregiver as well as for the somebody with dementia, a small little box for the person with dementia filled with things that are treasure to them. Things that will help spur their memories, pictures, um, trinkets, things that they will not eat, but things that will help them remember and remember good times, music, CDs, things of that nature. And then for the caregiver, we also say, mark out a place in your home, possibly a room, put a big do not disturb sign with a big red stop sign, and when you feel the need, you put that on the door, you go inside, you take a five minute break, a lot of deep breaths and say, I can continue this the next five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. Um, I, can, I can come and help. I can do what I need to do to make it through the next day. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carol. Now, now I noticed that, and by the way, it, doesn't it just change the way you think about your house, right? Now I noticed that, that um, since I've been here that the Council on Aging and apparently the Department of Public Works actually right here in Southboro is developing some kind of a special program in case your loved one is, isn't going to remember their street address anymore, that you, I guess this is going to really be, a, I want to see one of these on one of your, on one of your road signs. That's going to be quite something. But now when you heard all of Carol's suggestions, I know to some extent one of your thoughts, and one, once again, one of the reasons why we do these programs and we always make sure that they're taped is so that people at home can see them on cable, because a lot of people who are caregivers right now couldn't be here because they need to be at home. They need to be at home. Um, but you're, you're hearing these things and you're saying, this is going to look stupid, you know, in my house. You really want, do I really want to label the, the, the drawers? Do I really want to do this? The question is, do you want to stay home? Do you want to stay home? Do you want to protect your loved one, right? This is all about safety. And if you want to stay home, there are a lot of things you can do. So, a couple of other things. Um, so, suppose you've decided that you really want to do some of this stuff. Um, and that you go, you know, Carol comes over and her husband, um, and they go through and then you figure out, and maybe there are some big things that you want to do. Maybe there's a stair lift, maybe there's a, there's a number of other things. Maybe there's that special stove that you want to buy or some of that other equipment. And you're saying to yourself, I'm, you know, I'm Frank and Mary. I've only got a couple of hundred thousand in savings, and that sounds like a lot, but we're only 80. We could be living for a long time. We don't want to use up our money. This may be one of the few times that you want to think about doing a reverse mortgage. Now I know there are a million reasons to not do a reverse mortgage. That's why I never recommend them. I especially don't recommend them for folks who just don't want to take the hit because they've retired and they don't want to change their lifestyle by reducing their income. 